And joining me now to talk more about this is U.S. Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas. He serves on the Judiciary Intelligence and Armed Services Committee. Senator, welcome back to the program. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. So uh, how is the administration in their first 100 days doing as it pertains to China? Well, Tony, that answer you just played from uh, Tony Blinken is I'd say, a little mealy-mouthed, um, saying that we don't even want to contain China. Um, I guess I would say I don't want to contain China either. I want to defeat China, um, and in particular the Chinese Communist Party which holds itself up as the vanguard of the communist uh, dictatorship first in China and then ultimately to dominate the world. Uh, it's the same kind of mealy mouth approach you saw from Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan in Alaska a couple months ago when they hosted a summit of their counterparts and got dressed down, um, frankly, repeating all the Democratic talking points you've heard about America being a racist nation and having too many cops kill our own citizens. And rather than go on offense, um, about China's treatment of dumb people. It's slave labor and mass rape and genocide against religious and ethnic minorities. It's destruction of Christian churches throughout China. It's suppression of the freedoms of the Hong Kong people. Tony Blinken kind of meekly apologized for America. Um, so at least at the outset, the Joe Biden administration is not doing nearly enough to defend the United States and defend the principles of freedom against the Chinese Communist Party. Now, I, I watched the interview on 60 Minutes, and uh, when Nora O'Donnell um, introduced Secretary Blinken, she said that, uh, that Biden has selected someone to, quote, rebuild a depleted and demoralized State Department. Uh, and then, of course, went on to talk about how what's been missing is this, and, and Blinken made reference to this, this rules-based international order, oftentimes unwritten. Um, is the fact that the the Trump administration actually put America first, is that what upset the State Department? <laughs> well, Tony, it's an open secret in Washington that Hillary Clinton and John Kerry didn't do much to support the State Department either. Uh, they were more what you call the celebrity secretaries of state, and the bureaucrats were unhappy then, just like they're unhappy in the Trump administration. Um, but I do think that a lot of the permanent bureaucrats in the State Department do believe that we should put these globalist rules ahead of America's interest. And in the end, these rules can often benefit America, Tony, but we have to remember that what backs them up is not some pie-in-the-sky um, idealistic commitments, but American power, the American military, the American economy, and forceful American leadership. Uh, that's been lacking over these first 100 days of the Biden administration. So do you trust, from a negotiation standpoint, do you trust what China says for a, if we sit down at the table with them? Uh, no, of course not, Tony. And it is very worrisome to me. The first person that Joe Biden sent to China was John Kerry, his climate czar, who was such a great negotiator. He saddled this country with the Iran nuclear deal six years ago. So I, I'm very worried that John Kerry and Joe Biden will give away very concrete things, like, for instance, ceding total Chinese sovereignty over Hong Kong, or even backing away from our commitments to Taiwan, or uh, loosening the tariffs against China's predatory trade practices in return for fleeting ephemeral future promises. Like, you can just see John Kerry and Joe Biden saying we're going to lift the tariffs on uh, Chinese predatory trade practices in return for China promising to reduce its carbon emissions by 5 percent in 30 years. Um, I hope that doesn't happen, but that's exactly the kind of thing you could expect to see from this administration. Those types of actions could be dangerous for America's national security. It would be very dangerous, Tony. You know, we're in a, a long competition with China, and a central part of that competition is economic. Uh, China has been stealing our jobs and our factories, stealing our property uh, for decades. We finally, over the last four years, began to take a stand for America. Um, but if we roll back those policies, if we go back to the old views under the Obama administration, or frankly under Republican leadership as well, that China is a partner and we want to outsource more jobs to them and we want to become more dependent on them, it is deeply dangerous to our national security. I mean, China already has the market cornered on a lot of essential high-tech goods. We learned over the last year that China has the market cornered on a lot of basic low-tech goods, too, like 
ibuprofen or acetaminophen or surgical masks and gowns. Um, we can no longer allow the United States to be dependent on China in any critical industry or for any kind of critical essential good. And I would think, Senator Cotton, that the other nations, Russia in particular, are watching how we interact with China. Yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence, Tony, that Russia was massing troops in our Navy around Ukraine while China was doing massive incursions into Taiwanese airspace. They're probing Joe Biden together. Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Senator Cotton, as always, great to talk with you. Thanks so much for coming on today. Thank you, Tony.